Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Guess what I have today? I have something a little bit different. This is a Spear LT in 556. This is a 16 inch rifle version. So what is the Spear LT? Well, this is essentially the third iteration of the MCX uh, platform from Sig Sauer. I believe that this rendition came about as a result of the next generation squad weapon solicitation for the US Army. Uh, this contract was awarded in the 277 Fury large frame version of this uh, to the Army in April of 2022. So why did this come about? Well, I've been reading and trying to research, see if there's any corresponding military contract associated with the small frame variant but really i haven't been able to find anything everything is centered around the spear and gsw so that is a large frame version of this essentially uh, equating to an ar-10 uh, you can find it in different calibers such as 308 and the military caliber of 277 Fury, which is 6.8 by 51 millimeter. I don't think that is available to civilians yet, although I'm sure once they start fulfilling contracts, that's what we'll start seeing. So this one's fresh out of the box. Took me a while to find it, but a few months ago, stopped by the gun shop locally and the one that I go to has a layaway program so after my last promotion at work I decided to treat myself to something that is not an AR because in my opinion in my opinion ARs are a little bit played out uh, they have their place and of course it's uh, the gold standard probably for any issued rifle or department that uses them for work. Uh, I don't use a carbine or rifle for work because I'm a dirty civilian. But we can still LARP around and have fun at the range. And this is one of those things that I'm not going to review it. I'm not a reviewer, you know. This video has been brought to you by Crippling Debt and <laughs> myself. So I'm going to give it a fair shake. I know that there are some issues that people have found with the Sigus, with the Spear LT, such as the um, barrel flex slash handguard flex. Um, I don't think I'll have issues with that myself, but I am going to take every step necessary to make sure this barrel and handguard are properly torqued because we can't seem to guarantee quality control from Six Hour at this point <clears throat> as they try to fulfill contracts. So yeah, I mean, this thing looks really cool. I love the flat dark earth or uh, baby diaper explosion color. Um, it's a little bit, stock is a little bit short for me, but ever since the late nineties, when I saw the LR 300 from ZM weapon systems on a rudimentary website, have I wanted to have a folding stock modern rifle. Uh, something that you can actually fire while folded. I'm not sure what it is, but probably some sort of operator fantasy that I had at the time. 
So fast forward a couple of decades and I have the means to get something like this. So yeah, uh, I don't know how much more discussion is warranted, but I'm going to be doing a few videos on this. Um, one of them is going to be kitting this out and outfitting it with some accessories like sights and things to make it useful because this is how it comes it's bone stock and quite bare so not even plastic sights so it does come with one magpul magazine and that's about it in a lock which goes straight into the trash there are tons of reviews out there i'm not a reviewer but we're gonna do a little montage and get this thing kitted out so come with me to the warehouse and pick out some accessories let's say you Oh yeah, here's the warehouse. So, uh, decided that I'm going to use a, so I decided that I'm gonna use a EOTech HWS and a magnifier. For this as this is what I use with pretty much everything I have astigmatism and holographic is what works for me it's not a hundred percent clear but it is still a well-defined dot that I can use uh, with my eyesight uh, yeah so let's do that let's kit it out and then after this, I'll go LARPing around at the range. Stay tuned. All right, I got a little bit of ahead of myself. Uh, before we start bolting on crap to this thing, um, I'm going to make sure that the barrel is torqued and that the handguard is, is as well. I'm also going to wipe down the internals because there is manufacturing grease and shipping oils all over the thing and make sure the barrel is clean unobstructed all those things just prior to taking this out to the range all right so let's do that according to the manual that i don't have here but i'll probably put it up on the uh, on the screen, the barrel needs to be torqued down to 65 inch pounds. I'm sorry, 60 inch pounds. And these two bolts, these two bolts here that hold the handguard to the upper receiver need to be torqued down to 45 inch pounds. So let's do that first. I'm going to remove the handguard. Of course, we make sure we're fully clear. So, uh, oh wow, these pins are super tight. Let me get something push them out I'm using a brass punch so there we go. reason this is so tight is there's an accu wedge I believe yeah there's an accu wedge inside the upper receiver and that is keeping the two halves pretty tight Oh, that's tight. Just 
going to type. I'm sure this will, of course, work itself free as it's fired. And I won't have to use a punch or a tool next time. So here we got the upper free. Let's remove the carrier. Oh, this is greasy. Charging handle. Manual of arms is pretty similar to an AR-15, but this is no AR-15. This is an AR-18, essentially. And it looks like SIG uses a thin film lubricating coating inside the upper receiver. Something similar to Cerakote. Um, I have it here. I actually have that same coating, micro slick. Seems to be the case. All right, with the upper receiver free, the the handguard is captured with this pin here, which is the forward um, forward disassembly pin and also these set screws. So I am going to remove them first. Just loosen each side first. Okay. I do like how Sig Sauer puts a wear path um, portion in steel and it seems to be a user replaceable part as you can see it here so the rest of it is aluminum and you've got a steel part that the cam pin this one here rides on during operation I think that's really cool all right, I believe I have to remove these two as well. Now, in case I see barrel flex continuing to happen, or if it happens at all in my case, after I torque everything down, I do have a part from Arisaka, which was originally intended for the MCX. And this is supposed to replace the six hour barrel clamp. All right, so now we can remove the receiver. And guess what? I did not need to remove those two screws because they are meant to stay inside the handrail. So I really should read the manual. This is also my first six hour MCX platform. I've never had one, although I have wanted one ever since the version two of the Virtus came out. Okay. I'll tighten them later. Let me make sure that I put it back on the right way. Trying to reassemble it. Yeah, that's correct. All right. So the barrel screws are here and they need to be torqued to 
60 inch pounds. So I have one, I have two torque wrenches here. And I will use both. This one only goes to 50. So I'll have to use this one here. This is a Brownells wrench. It's fairly easy to set. I also have some, my other torque wrenches all go to foot pounds so they don't go as low as this. And I have a 60 inch pound setting, 60.0. There you go use the Torx 15, no, Torx, for, Torx 45 is for the barrel nuts, <coughs> barrel screws. Let's get that out. Torx 25. Not sure where I got the 45 from, probably from the fact that it's, there's a 45 inch pound value. So I have loosened the screws. And now I will tap it, make sure that it's seated properly. And then I'll do this vertically. So we have even distribution of force, and there is an order in which you torque them, one and two. So that's 60 inch pounds. And I don't see any sort of movement. But if I have any issues, I'm going to use this clamp. This is for the MCX Vertex, Vertus, Vertus. Uh, and it does look different. But I believe it will work so i've been told there we go let's uh wipe this down a little bit with some solvent using breakthrough which is just a mineral mineral solvent there get some of this grease and oil off Leave especially around the operating rod and piston area since there's a lot of carbon there it gets built up in this gas key and piston these are supposed to be run dry if my LWC is anything to go by this gas piston is also self-regulating looks like there's a vent hole here right here so i'm sure i can expect a bunch of carbon and crap on my support hand as it blows through the hand guard piece we'll cross that bridge when we get to it again uh, we have just reached 1,000 subscribers on the channel just last week and I want to thank everyone for watching and putting up with my lack of content 
it has been a crazy couple of years for me with work and life in general. I haven't had much chance to devote to creating content. And as such, I feel like I may have let you down because I never believed that people would be interested in seeing my gun related content because YouTube is saturated with gun tubers. And they all have a lot better content and experience as well. So I was never in the military and, but I did work overseas as a PMC in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. Doesn't mean anything. You know, I stayed at Holiday Inn Express once, right? So I have a whole different outlook on on the gun community, and you know, I'm fascinated by these things because it's engineering, it's technology, and mechanical things which fascinate me. You know, just like watches, and ever since I was a teenager, I had a fascination with weapons 45 inch pounds for these set screws yeah so I don't have a very big collection I don't have a lot of skill as of yet but I have taken some courses and I have improved quite a bit since the first time I ever made a video. None of you will ever see those because they're horrible. These two screws on the bottom, I'm gonna do it 45 inch pounds as well. One and now two. Let's clean the inside here. Now I wonder if a reaction rod will work this upper receiver because one of the things I want to do is perhaps remove this flash hider that six hour includes these are meant to be used exclusively with their line of EcoFlow suppressors and those, of course, due to probably contract obligations, are nowhere to be found. The unobtainium. So here I am flexing the barrel to either side. So here we go. Just did. yeah it looks like it stays in the direction that you bent it in so this is a continuing issue all right let me disassemble this again and see if there's something else i can do and i'll speed this up and cut this out Be 
because I'm not happy with this. This is, to be honest, it's unacceptable. SIG, you should know better. To have your customers become beta testers. I see the index pins are fully engaged in the receiver slots. All right, let's try complete removal of the bolts, the screws. I have seen on some forums that people have replaced this with the Arisaka zero retention clamp and I see that these are spring loaded. This should come out. Yes. Okay. Came out straight. You're also not supposed to twist it as you remove it and reinsert it into the receiver extension. This looks clean. This looks like a PVD extension. Uh, it's very slick. I'm gonna wipe the inside. Remove all the grease. Massive Q-tip. Let me see what this looks like and if it fits. Doesn't look the same. Unsure how this will fit. So, yeah, this seems to be a little bit uh, kind of intuitive. I'll research it and do this another time. I'll do a test of zero retention next time I'm out at the range to make sure that I want to verify if it's an actual issue that I need to be concerned about or not. So to put the barrel back. I'm going to do this vertically so I don't have any chance of there. Drove it home. To get these back in, you have to squeeze these tabs. Get the fat fingers out of the way.
60 inch pounds. I'm gonna do 61. straight vertical all right I need to paint mark these these screws make sure that they don't walk out so let me let me prep for that I've got a bottle of alcohol and a couple patches. Get all the grease off. The barrel here, uh, from what I've been able to discern and read, it is a one in seven twist, 5.56 five, caliber, of course. And it is carbon steel. That's what the website says. I'm not sure if it's in the proper chromoly vanadium, but it is cold hammer forged. I do not know if it is chrome lined. I don't believe so. If anything, it might be ferritic, nitrocarburized, or a similar, similar treatment. All right, let me get a paint marker and I'll be right back. Okay, well, idiot me doesn't know where my paint pen is so I'm gonna skip that part and I'll take this apart later a different a different day for now let's put this thing back together we know it's torqued correctly so if I need to call sig for support because it's not retaining zero You are all witnesses that I did everything right. Okay. There we go. Screw back on. I don't run lasers. I only run white lights, at least for the time being. But hey, if you guys can get me to 2 million subscribers within the next two weeks, I'll buy some night vision and lasers and all that good stuff. Huh? Hint, hint. But no, seriously. 
I have no need for night vision. I want it so I can LARP at the range with my buddies, but they hunt and um, they use night vision. I may tag along with them once if I ever get to that point to play with the cool kids. All right, so we've got everything inspected and torqued. Let's put this thing back together. Start putting some goodies on it. Try to line up the takedown pin. Man, these things aren't tight. You shouldn't have to hammer them in. I do hope that they loosen up with time. Let me clean the bolt carrier group. <clears throat> this one, lift it up, tilt it, remove the recoil assembly. I don't know what oil they use, so I'm going to replace it. I'm not going to fully field strip it. Let's see, what lube are we going to use today? Normally I use go juice or in the summer, which now it's summer, it's August, 2023 in Texas. And it is over 110 degrees now during the day. So I'll be using the ALG thin grease because I know this is, I don't want oil to flash off First session. So, yeah, making sure everything's recording still. <laughs> Loop points, I assume, are in the contact areas, just like let's see, is this yes, this is the this is the thin grease from ALG. So I'll put it here on the upper contact areas. See, it's a little bit thick, but it's very thin grease. I'll do a little bit right there. This will liquefy in the heat once it starts operating. It's supposed to work in the winter as well and not gum up on you, but. All right, let me put this back on. So. It goes away. It only goes on one way. There we go. The assembly is ready to go in. Put the charging handle. A little grease there, a little grease on the lugs. And on this top lug. So it looks like very similar to what a AR-15 direct impingement would use. Bolt this forward.
All right. There we go. Pretty good. Now let's do what you're really here for. And that is accessories. So I decided to go with EOTech HWS or hybrid holographic site HHS if you combine these two together. These are the block three. Uh, the and I'm sorry, the HWS is block three, and then the magnifier is G33. So the G33 is quite old. In tan, of course, it has to be in baby poop brown. good can leave well enough alone so we're gonna go with the unity fast system operators gotta operate so this is gonna give me a more heads up shooting position because I have a long neck skinny face fat belly so here's the EOTech riser and this is the flip to center Omni mount beautiful mismatched FDP anodize. As always, I don't need the instructions. So first things first, <clears throat> the magnifier is going to install upside down into the mount like this. And it looks like my screws already have Loctite on them. Don't know what this is. SIG. Hmm. Perhaps I should read the instructions. No matter. Let's get this done. I will have to see at what height do I install or at what rail position do I install the EOTech. EOTech wants you to install the site towards the back of the ejection tab, the shell deflector. but I don't know how much space that gives me with the Omni mount because I still have to put some irons on this. So, you know, this is what it would kind of look like with the riser, but let's plan this out a little bit better. All right. <clears throat> Let's get some irons on this thing first. Let's see what kind of real spacing we have to work with. I've got a set of Spikes Tactical iron sights. They are the 
the front and rear micro gen 2 i've never used them before but cac sites are unobtainium These are relatively inexpensive. Everything's Torx 25 today. Feels light. Do thirty five. Okay. Now for the fronts. Wonder if I should put them all the way forward. on my bench here okay so we've got irons we now have something to reference as far as spacing is concerned because I do want to use both work yeah. yeah that'll work I think that will be fine <clears throat> so whenever installing accessories on the top 1913 rail of your rifle before you tighten it up, always drive it forward as far as it will go and then tighten it down. Right now I'm doing 35 inch pounds, but once I have everything set, I'll do off camera the proper torque settings for these. Okay, let's install the magnifier. Okay, seems like it fits fine. These screws already have the Loctite applied to them, so I'm not going to do that. 
right now. forward. And I will torque it to 35 inch pounds until I get the right values in the manual. Don't know what this tab is. This little plastic tab came in the bag for the Omni mount. It says SIG on it, <laughs> which is strange. And let's see how much tension I have to install on this. Yeah, it's super loose. So there is a tension adjustment on the screw here. I'm going to turn it in a couple of degrees. until I get some resistance and it's tight when I throw the lever. This is super loose right now. So let's push it in, turn the screw a couple of times until you get Resistance, but it's still it's way loose. Because this was installed on a two by four prior to. Wow, it's still loose. This looks like an ADM mount. I think it is. I recognize the lever geometry. Okay, now it's too tight. So now we know we're getting close. this out. You watch me fumble around with this simple operation. Okay, there we go. It barely touches the iron sights, but that's good enough. And it looks the part, that's for sure. And now HWS is placed on its riser. It seems a little bit loose, so I'll tighten it just a tad. So there you go. Now we're talking. So see, I still have a somewhat of a cheek weld it's along my jawline, even with this high mount. The stock is short, but that's 
to be expected. It's a wire stock. Eye relief is okay. That's a pretty awesome setup, if I may say so. But I can see that it's not fully stowed. It's still stuck up a little bit. So I'm going to have to remove this rear sight in order to get it installed properly. It's either that or I have to move it all the way to the rear. But I don't really want to do that. Yeah, it still interferes. So no rear sight. But that's okay. We'll see the eye relief later. That's a really nice and clean setup. That will work. That will work very well for me. All right, next thing. is a light, we do have a light. And for that, I'm gonna use the Trifire Ultra Scout. These are kind of old now. But I got them at a really steep discount on Black Friday one or two years ago. It's just your standard two cell CR123 light. Comes with batteries. So yeah, I'm not doing the mod light thing uh, on this. Uh, I do have a M-Lock Arisaka mount for this, but it is not here yet. I don't think it is anyway. Yeah. So I can't mount the light today. That's all right, because I am going to mount a vertical grip. Not sure which one, Magpul or BCM. It's BCM today. You know what? I kind of have a preference for my pool. It's always a little bit tricky.
use tweezers. My fingers are just not long enough. That's what she said. Okay, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> Stupid end lock. I'm not able to use my fingers on this. So, brute force it is. Don't judge me, please. I'll cut this out. Ah, bear with me, I'm just trying to get these stupid, stupid end lock nuts to spin on. All right, let's see. My M-lock is spinning. But you get the idea. I'll fix it later. This is essentially just an index point. I don't use it like this. It's pretty good, huh? So I think that's pretty much all I'll do today for this iteration of it. Uh, I may change the muzzle device to a Surefire three prong so I can use my Socom suppressor. Although I'm kind of leery of using that because from what I've seen, this system is quite overgassed as it is in the normal setting. And the gas block does not have a suppressed setting. It just has normal and adverse. So essentially it's a overgassed and then massively overgassed for function. So put some batteries in these things, get the mount shipped in for the flashlight and the next one is going to be at the range. But like I said, I'm not a reviewer. So if you're expecting a review, uh, it's really just going to be a 
range report type of format and yeah so I guess this is going to be it for this video I hope you enjoyed some of this and if you wish to support the channel uh, please subscribe and turn the bell notification on that way you get all the latest larpage from me and since I don't do a lot of content it's not gonna be a constant notification nightmare um, but if you're interested in the content I would love for you to subscribe and let me know how I'm doing I hope that every episode after this gets better and better and I also um, even though I qualify for monetization now I am not going to monetize the channel because I can't stand ads so if at some point I start to seek support I may end up doing something like patreon and we'll see where that takes us until then I want to thank you for watching and stay accurate all right so I've got a couple of additional things I want to install on this uh, one of them is a six hour cheek riser which I'll be I don't know if I need it specifically but since I am running the the riser on the optic I'm gonna see if I can maximize my cheek weld using a slightly taller cheek riser so the old one comes off pretty easy, I believe it just pops off from the skeleton stock. And there is a little block that holds the thing in place. See, this is the exact same one. <laughs> it looks like it's the same one. Um, I thought it was taller. But it isn't. So it's the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> But you can adjust it for and aft if you want. And I'll put the other one aside. Who knows, they might break. Uh, so the next thing I wanna install on this is a QD point for the sling, which non-existent here. Any, anywhere on the rail and I'm not sure why but I believe the Virtus used to have it not sure why they would omit it from the new design nevertheless I do have a spare QD point for MLOT and this is a Bravo company unit so what I'll do is I'll put it somewhere over here I may change the location of it later That's the thing about M-Lock. Sometimes it's a godsend and sometimes it's a major pain in the ass to 
get these things aligned so you can remove them. So you have to stage these nuts, these nuts. Wow, he does not want to cooperate today. good this one's good all right there we go Doesn't have to be too tight there now we have a sling point where there once there was none but that you know what I don't like where that is because that hits against my palm so it's gonna have to go either all the way on the front or here Okay, well, I'm going to put it all the way in the front. go sling can go on no this is actually not as heavy as I was I was I this is really not as heavy as I would have expected for a piston gun and for something that weighs eight pounds I believe is the dry weight on this because this I can actually hold it manipulated unsupported whereas yeah this is lighter so this is my LWRC M6 IC SBR and I'm cleaning the bowl right now that one seemed heavy to me but this is actually here so I'm gonna to have to work out a little bit but yeah again thank you and uh, we'll see you at the range take care and goodbye now should my attempt at LARPing um, you know with this unity mount and 2.93 inch height the optic is too much if it's too much then i can uh, i have another option uh, i do have a standard ar stock adapter that fits on the six hour and i believe this is from vertus so you've got this here that fits here instead of the skeleton stock let's see how that works out i will of course take the uh test it out at the range with the skeleton stock with the skeleton stock just simply 
comes off from the M1913 rail, the back of the receiver extension. Just like so. So there's the old. Entire screw removed. No, there you go. Even the little scallop cut matches, and it's not for this model specifically. So there you go. Standard AR extension, in the stock, which also folds. And then I can take any AR stock. This is a B5 Systems Bravo. There you go. This is what it looks like. Infinitely more comfortable. And the cheek, cheek weld is perfect for me anyway, with this high mount. But again, that is a... Now the folding mechanism is a little bit different. I think you have to kind of twist it because it's not button activated. Like the Spear Light. So you don't slap it. it has what looks like a cam lock mechanism here so I have yet to figure that out I will try to do it without breaking it oh there you go So there, it's folded. But as you can see, because the profile of the B5 Bravo is thicker than the skeletonized stock, when you fold it, I don't know how to do it gracefully because you have to lift up it tends to interfere with the receiver it still operates and you could extend this out so that the offset isn't as much but it doesn't fully lock so I could try a different lower profile stock. But I really like this a lot more. But yeah, you know, it just looks like a just another AR. We'll see which version I end up with. I think that's it for the evening. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.